are you thinking about possibly moving to Washington state? And you want to know how much does it cost to live here? Yeah. I get asked this question all the time today. I'm going to share with you five different cities spread out across Washington. I'm going to share with you how much it costs to live there, what the average problem price is going to be, what the average income is, and some of their key demographics that you want to know as you're thinking about and evaluating where you could possibly move to Washington, even if it makes sense to move to Washington. My name is Mike Novak. I'm a real estate agent for the Novak Real Estate Team, part of Real Brokerage, and our team operates out of Snohomish County. So out of this list of cities I'm going to share with you, we really only specialize in Everett. If you're looking at other areas, we'd be able to connect you with other real estate agents, but we really would just focus on Everett and all of Snohomish County. So, but I can share with you still the context of home affordability and how much money is going to get you across the entire state, of course, as well. Let's jump right into five different areas in Washington state and what it's going to cost to buy a home right here. First up on the cities is Wenatchee. For those that don't know Wenatchee, go Google it. It is in Eastern Washington. It's an area of pretty big growth right now. It's not a big city. It's got about 35,000 people that live there. The average household median income is about $60,000. So not super affluent, but also not horrible either. It's below the national average, but not by that much. Wenatchee has a lot of value when you're thinking about possibly buying. And so it's something that's worth looking into. Like when you look at Western Washington and you look at Eastern Washington, they're almost two completely different lifestyles. On the Western Washington side over here with Everett, with Seattle, with Tacoma, you've got cities that are going to have more seasonality to them. A lot of the bigger cities are on the West side, of course, but you have really distinct seasons. You've got spring that's very you know bright and awesome and rainy well, at the same time you've got a distinctive summer that's warm but not too hot you've got kind of a mild fall and then you've got winter that's not too bad either like we typically will get a few snow days but in eastern washington it's totally different it's kind of a climate of extremes you've got really hot summers it's not uncommon to go into the hundreds over there and you got really extreme winters as well where it gets really really cold and you're gonna have a lot more snow build up as well so just be aware of that but as you're thinking about Looking across the whole state, we have to talk about Eastern Washington just because the home affordability there is much better than it is in Western Washington. I want to make sure that you know that. So the average home price over there, it's $469,000 as of the shooting of this video. All of the payment scenarios I've made for you on this video are assuming about a 7.2% interest rate, which is where rates are at right now, a conventional mortgage and 5% down. So that may or may not be the interest rate you get. Obviously, rates change all the time. This is not a guarantee at all. It's just using a ballpark estimate. So you have a rough idea of what that purchase price translates to in an actual monthly payment because most people care massively about how much their household payment is going to be per month. So in Wenatchee, if the pay, if the average home price is four sixty nine, your payment is going to be right around $3,800 a month. And that's going to include property taxes, homeowners insurance, private mortgage insurance, and all those other things. If you put down a larger down payment, like 20%, you won't have private mortgage insurance. Uh, but I just wanted to put out a very realistic scenario because a lot of people just put 5% down. It's very common that we see that, okay? As far as some other demographics of when actually goes, um, there's two other key demographics I want to share with you. The first one, I already shared with you the income. Just to recap that, it's $60,000. I want to share with you the crime rate as well. So the crime rate, there, it's not horrible, but it's not great either in when actually approximately one in 26 people is going are going to experience a violent or a property crime in Wenatchee. So that's not like super horrible. I'm going to share with you some uh, worse cities here in just a few minutes, um, but it's not great either. Neighborhood Scout is an awesome resource to pull these kind of statistics from, and that's where I always look at when I'm examining different cities that I want to learn more about the key demographics. So the crime rate, one in 26. The other one that I pull is the school ratings. Um, they're about 23% above the state average. So that means that out of the Wenatchee School District, 23% of those schools are going to be ranked higher than the state average. So it's not bad. There's higher rated school districts for sure on this list. But in the overall scheme of things, you're probably looking to try to balance a lot of these things. And schools may not even matter to you, but most people want to balance what is the cost of living and what is the average income? Those are like the two most important things. And then crime and schools are not far beyond that. So are not far behind that. So that's Wenatchee in a nutshell. Definitely go Google where Wenatchee is at. Could be a place that you consider 
evaluating just because of the value that you can still find. Okay, next up, we're jumping right to the big daddy city of Washington State. That's right, it's Seattle, of course, the biggest city in the state, home to about 733,000 people. The average home price, about $834,000. That comes into the whopping $6,800 a month if you put 5% down. So pretty expensive, but the income is also really good. There's a lot of tech jobs in Seattle. You've got Facebook, you've got Amazon, you've got Microsoft close by. There is a very tech heavy industry there. And with that comes some really well-paying jobs. The average income or the average median household is well over hundred thousand dollars in Seattle, Washington. So it definitely is the highest of this list, but as are the home prices as well. When it comes to crime, Seattle does not rank super well. Uh, it's it's not that it's a dangerous city, but there's a lot of property crime there, like burglaries, like vandalism, things like that. Um, there's been a lot of homelessness in the past in Seattle, especially in the last five years. It's improved for sure, but it is still a problem that you want to be aware of. Um, the crime rate, though, it's one in 16. So like one out of 16 people are going to experience a violent or property crime in Seattle, which is even worse than Wallachie. So just be aware of that. I mean, obviously, big cities have higher crime rates typically. But comparing big cities across the United States, Seattle is definitely the higher range for crime. So something you absolutely want to be aware of. When it comes to school quality, so about 53% of the schools within Seattle School District rate higher than the state average. So the schools are actually pretty good for a bigger city. Sometimes you'll see school quality deteriorating in bigger cities. Not in Seattle. It's still reasonably high. Seattle is a really big city. It's spread out. Um, there's obviously the core downtown area. It goes north a while. It goes south quite a bit too. Um, it's a cool place to live if you want that big city vibe, but it's going to cost you. I mean, you're going to likely be able to make some great money, especially if you're in tech, but you're going to pay for it with your house. No question about it. This is the most expensive city on this list. There are still more expensive areas in Washington state, but none that made this list. Um, I tried to focus on five that I thought would have some diversity to them. It also represents some different demographics for you. So that's Seattle in a nutshell. Um, there's some definite positives. There's some definite negatives as well. You got to know about both uh, to make the best decision for you. Okay, that brings me to Everett, uh, the largest city in Snohomish County, home to about 110,000 people. This is our backyard. Our office is actually in Everett. Uh, it's a home to some major employers, Boeing being right at the top of the list uh, over there at Payne Field. A lot of our clients work at Boeing, um, very, very big employer, critical to the economy of Everett. Um, but the home price is about $618,000. So it's a big step down from Seattle in pricing. Um, it's about you know, 30, 40 minutes north of Seattle. So it may be difficult to commute from Everett to Seattle if you're working down there. Um, but it also is, that's pretty common that a lot of people do live up north because of the affordability they drive to work in Seattle or Bellevue. So something to look at there. As far as a payment goes, it's going to put you right around $5,000 a month um, if you're putting 5% down at current rates. So again, put a bigger down payment, you're going to have a much lower monthly payment and probably drop your private mortgage insurance as well if you put 20% down. So definitely look at that. As far as crime rate in schools go, so one in 23 people in ever experience violent crime. So pretty similar to Wenatchee and definitely safer than Seattle when it comes to crime, but it's still an issue. Like, you know, those of us that have lived around Everett for years, we remember Everett from 15, 20 years ago when it had a really high crime rate, and it's not that bad anymore. Um, downtown Everett still experiences some crime for sure, but it's become much, much safer, and a lot of the homelessness issues have been pushed out over the last five to seven years or so. There's been a lot of um, redevelopment downtown, a lot of newer buildings kind of going up, newer condos and apartments, things like that, and that's pushed out a lot of that um, kind of negative stuff that was going on there. As far as schools go, uh, a little bit better in Seattle, 57% of the schools are going to rank higher than the state average. So not bad at all. Uh, when it comes to income, the average household or median household income for Everett is $71,000. So it's definitely a step down in income from Seattle. And that's why you see so many people that try to get that higher income down in Seattle with that lower um, housing expense up in Everett. That's why you see people commuting all the time down there. And commutes, like I said, they can be okay or they can not be okay depending on the time of the day and what's going on with traffic. But Everett is a market that we know super well. And of course, an area that we could help you if you're curious and exploring Everett or the surrounding communities. There is a lot of cities around Everett that also have some great value. 
and that also have um, a better crime rating and even better school districts as well. So Everett is not your only option if you're thinking about Snohomish County. But if you want to be close to Seattle, like reasonably close, could be a good option to look at for sure to try to balance getting the benefits of making money in the city and the household uh, expense benefits of Snohomish County. So that's kind of Everett. Okay, let's jump back to the eastern side of Washington for just a minute for our fourth city. We covered Wenatchee, we covered Seattle, we covered Everett, and that brings me to Kennewick. Okay, Kennewick is a growing area over by the Tri-Cities there. It's in eastern Washington, south a bit, quite a bit south of Wenatchee um, when you're looking at it on the map. So go Google its location. Um, but it's uh, it's a very interesting area. It's got a lot of redevelopment going on. There's a lot of affordability opportunity there. And that's why I put it on this list. Again, just like Wenatchee, it's kind of a climate of extremes over there, like cold winters, hot summers. Um, there's a really heavy agricultural com uh, community over there, just like Wenatchee. You know, like a lot of the fruit for all of Washington comes from eastern Washington. So that's a pretty big deal over there. The average home price for Kennewick is $415,000. So it's the best value out of this entire list. Puts you at a mortgage payment of around $3,400 a month including mortgage insurance, property taxes, and homeowner's insurance as well. He put 5% down at current rate. So not that bad and definitely the most affordable out of all of the different cities on this list. You just have to be okay with the climate and kind of where things are located at. It's a very uh, diverse ethnicity area as well. Like there's a lot of different cultures coming together there, and that's kind of what makes it pretty cool. There's a lot of land over in Kennewick. Um, just a lot of farm land and stuff like that and kind of desert land. So I could see it sprawling out for the foreseeable future. And a lot of people are moving from Western Washington over that direction just because of this, the really big difference in housing prices. I mean, if you even look at Everett comparing $618,000 to $415,000, that's a massive difference. I mean, you're talking about $1,600 a month payment difference just to move to the eastern side of Washington. So a lot of people have said, hey, you know what? Maybe we're going to make less money with the cost of living is going to be way less over there as well. The average income in Kennewick, it's about $64,000 for the median household income. So not amazing, but not horrible either. Um, but it'll definitely be lower than like an Everett, or, you know, kind of comparable. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, as far as the schools go, not awesome. 14% uh, of the schools in the Kennewick School District are rated higher than the state average. So it's not nearly as strong as some of the other areas on this list. When it comes to crime... Uh, it's a 1 in 28 chance of being a victim of a property or violent crime. So uh, it's it's really similar to, to Wenatchee when it comes to that um, that level of things. So again, it's kind of a balance. You know, you're going to have less favorable schools that are not rated as high, a little bit higher crime rates, but way better home prices. So definitely something to look at. So if you're curious about where kind of at, just go Google it and kind of get a feel for if that would make sense for you or not. Uh, and depending on what kind of industry and what you do for work, maybe something to look into for affordability, of course. Okay, that brings me to the final city on this list today, and that is Tacoma, Washington. Tacoma is south of Seattle by a good bit, uh, north of Olympia. It is on the water. Point Ruston is a beautiful um, higher-end community in Tacoma, awesome place to check out. The average home price in Tacoma is about $474,000. Comes out to about $3,900 a month, including mortgage insurance, homeowner's insurance, and taxes if you put 5% down at current rate. So not horrible. Definitely one of the more affordable areas in Western Washington. Quite a bit less expensive than, say, Everett. But here's kind of the downside to Tacoma. The crime rate is super high. It was a 1 in 12 chance of experiencing a violent or uh, property crime in Tacoma. And it's got a bad reputation for that. Like, maybe it's improved recently. I don't know. I don't live there. It's not a market that I take care of or service. So I don't know that much about it beyond just the demographics I look at and the reputation I hear from people that have lived there. And it's got a reputation for having violent crime. It just does. You know, that's, that's a worse crime rate than Seattle. So keep that in mind. The population is about 219,000 people. So it's a big city, bigger than Everett. Um, obviously not nearly as big as Seattle, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a place that a lot of people look at just because of the affordability. It's an affordable place to buy on the west side, which makes it kind of, you know, something that people want to look into. Um, there's a lot of surrounding uh, areas and communities around Tacoma that may be a little bit safer, but also still offer you some of the benefits of lower pricing. Okay, When it comes to the average income for Tacoma, it's right at $69,000. So not bad, not awesome, definitely not like top of the list like Seattle is, but it's still not horrible. 
the schools are a 24 percent uh better than the state average so that means you know if you take the state average 24 percent of the schools in the tacoma district are going to rate higher than what the state average will so not horrible not awesome either it's definitely not as good as some of the other areas uh, if you're thinking about tacoma i would just look really carefully at the area you're going to move to and make sure you're comfortable with the safety of it that could be a big issue that you really want to look into especially if you have kids or something like that or if you're a single lady um, you know, just be really careful. And, and I know there's some great neighborhoods in Tacoma. I know there's some not great neighborhoods as well. You need a neighborhood expert agent down there to really help you navigate those and be really honest up front with you about where to look at and maybe, um, you know, lesser um, or more dangerous places that you may want to stay clear of. So that's my breakdown for you. Five totally different areas, completely different vibes, different cultures, different uh, economics, different demographics in each one of these cities. I want to kind of give you just kind of a wide variety if we look at Washington as a whole. And again, Eastern Washington is very different than Western Washington, but it's an important uh, area to contrast between the two just because the home prices are so much less in Eastern Washington. It's something you definitely want to be aware of. Western Washington is absolutely beautiful, but you're going to pay for it. Okay. So if you're thinking about moving anywhere in Snohomish County, which includes Everett, definitely reach out to me. We have one of the top ranked teams in this area for helping uh, buyers and sellers. We've helped over 1,200 families in the last five years alone make a move. We'd love to be a resource for you as well. My contact information is down below. It's Mike Novak from the Novak team.